everybody. Um, my name is Cheap Sushi. <laughs> it's a kind of goofy name, but uh, I'm also known as previously as Video Room 207. And on the Punkomatic.net community boards, I was uh, the ghost of Rick James, and I released some things under that name as well. And I just wanted to make this video as a bit of a thank you to the Punkomatic community and Evil Dog Games. I should have made this video, well I wanted to make this video a long time ago, you know a lot of years have passed and it's, it's kind of crazy how much how much time has passed actually. Not just since Punkomatic 2 has come out but also since the last time I've ever uh, really uploaded anything and um, since I've really made much of anything in Punkomatic regardless and um, it's just long overdue and I just kind of wanted to say you know not just thank you but also in a way a goodbye because I'm, I'm still not sure if I'll ever post again and what exactly you know a lot of a lot of years have gone by and, I, and things change you know and you know I was a completely different person so many years ago and um, I'm sure a lot of people have grown up playing Pokemonic they're probably teenagers and or even kids and now they're adults and you know same thing for me like growing up a new like different career path a lot of things happened and you know life gets in the way for a lot of people and I just kind of wanted to look back on some things that I made talk about some things from behind the scenes and uh, just you know just say like a final thing and um, maybe even do one last project um, I was thinking maybe one last Pokematic magazine um, maybe one last battle of the bands but yeah, so here's the video with like we'll go through a few things that I, that I made and just kind of reminisce a bit and and we'll go from there. So as the video plays, I'll have different artwork in the background just kind of scrolling through. Um not necessarily in any specific order, but just you know, just randomly there just show like there was a lot of stuff that I made and other people made and um so I just never really did much with it. Some of it ended up in the Punko magazine. Some of it in music videos, some in uh, the websites like the Palm, like Palm Records and Palm Corner. Um, but big shout out to Trace of Hatred. He's the one that basically knew how to um, use Illustrator, and just <laughs> none of us could <laughs> get as good as him. And at that time, at least, and he, we would always go to him to like do some custom band work. And he, you know, Pokematic as a flash game. Obviously, there's there's just so much work that went behind it but it is a flash game and there was like limitations but we kind of were able to kind of use that as a guide to kind of go a little bit further and that's where all the music videos came from and you know and the and we just wanted to go a little bit further with customization and you know people like Trace of Hatred and uh, so many other people some people were drawing their characters their uh, band members and some were um, hand drawing, some were using other like software and I mean there was a lot of people contri contributing to basically make the game and the community and the bands themselves like more lively and more personalized and you know really put like a lot of creative ener energy into all of this and so it just it went beyond just being uh, this like simple f you know people think like all oh, simple flash game but you know I, I just want to show in the background that there, were, there was a lot of thought behind a lot of the things that people were doing in this game and that's what kind of got me interested too into going further with like my own um, different projects in the with, uh, with the game itself at that time I just started school for uh, for art and I was doing uh, graphic design and learning how to do music videos so right at the beginning is like when I discovered Punkomatic 2 and, and that that was a huge part of why I got so involved in the community because it became another outlet like I said to kind of put like that creative energy into something but not only that I I kind of wanted to, to talk about how games like Punkomatic are just especially at that time was just a great outlet for just a uh, you know emotional energy like stress and having something to do and um <laughs> I mean I, I remember I'd, I'd even played at my girlfriend's house and 
I play music while, while uh, like I was, you know, even at school sometimes, and I jot down ideas, and it was always something that I kind of have in the back of my head, and um, for me it was it was it was that kind of outlet because I, uh, just the way I grew up in like my living situation and everything, I and just uh, you know, for whatever reason, I never really got into the band myself, and that's that's always been something that. I, I wish I would have gone that route. Um, and Pokemonic basically let you make that fictional band, and so that was like the perfect, you know, medium to to explore like a kind of world that I didn't really get into. But I always loved the the thought and like I and 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 things that involving bands and the production and you know, like I said, like I always loved the music videos, clothing, the the uh, composition, writing music, and the history behind bands, and what happened when, why, and stuff like that always interested me, but for whatever reason, I, I never really got into playing myself, and so Punkomatic was that thing, you know, just to have a fictional version of if I did have a band, this is what it would be like, and I, but I'm sure Punkomatic, over time, let, I'm sure a lot of people, um, ended up making real bands and or going a music direction in their lives or I was, I'm always curious like what happened to a lot of the people from punkmatic.net like did they end up in in a band themselves like did they make music did it really something I listened to <laughs> like you never know like you know punkmatic was like so global that you never know what kind of bands like came out of it um there's nothing wrong if you didn't end up in a band or do anything music like I said, it was always a fr like I never ended up in a band, but it was just a, gr a great creative outlet for that kind of stuff. And so the stuff that you see in the background and and everything else is just kind of like uh, just just a little piece of that. One thing I wanted to bring up was like where the name even came from, the Ghost of Rick James. Um, <laughs> people probably don't remember, but back in the early days of the genre that I was really into at the time. Well, I still am. Um, and and uh, deathcore. A lot of bands used to incorporate a lot of like funny like clips from movies, from Family Guy, and to, like kind of have like a bit of comic relief in the songs, or like kind of something random. But the bands would have really like goofy titles, and because um, at that time like bands were still it was it's often called the deathcore 2.0 era. Because a lot of bands were doing a lot of really experimental like loose structurally like songs and they weren't like so precise and clean like perfect com like compositions but so there's a lot of experimentation and often they would incorporate a lot of different like elements in the song and sometimes sometimes it'd be entirely uh, random well at that time um, Dave Chappelle if most people know like he's a comedian and he was making all these like different skits and there was like this one skit with uh, Rick James and if you don't know Rick James he's a musician more popular from like the 70s and 80s and even up to the 90s and um, he's really known for like just uh, kind of his personality like really like a little drug <laughs> like a drug habit and just like being kind of like all every like everywhere and like just having a big personality and I kind of wanted that incorporated into this fictional band in Punkomatic because I was a very like shy kid and I didn't really I, I was a really quiet person so and I heard like this uh this skit that Dave Chappelle did with with Rick James and just like I just was like I needed to use that somehow and it just became the ghost of Rick James like like the spirit of Rick James is somehow in this band, this crazy fictional punkomatic band that needed to be wild and like out there and like just total opposite of who I was really. And that's where the name came about. So the first song I ever made was called These Pretzels Are Salty. <laughs> it was kind of a play on a Seinfeld episode <laughs> where Kramer was like these pretzels are making me thirsty. Again, it kind of goes back to like that time in Deathcore where like people were just 
putting random stuff in, in songs or goofy titles and everything. But this was like legit the first song I made in the game and I thought it was brutal as shit. Um, but then I heard some people make some real like pretty sick deathcore in the game. But I was pretty proud of it at that time and uh, I think I was the, the second music video ever on on YouTube about Punkomatic where there's actually like a bit more effort into like the the movement of the camera and everything and uh, I just think I was just kind of just kind of like lucky at that time because I, I just kind of was more familiar with some of the software and recording things but uh, the first mistake I made with that I remember recording even I, I made this mistake with um, the smile video um, is that I record the video and use the audio from the recording instead of laying the audio on top of it. And I always kind of gave the video like a bit of a, a laggy kind of feel like the sound. But uh, yeah, it was just, uh, that was like the first goofy song and I, st I still go back and listen to it, but it's like, I look at the, the like I look at the song now in, in Pokemonic too, it's like, it's so basic, but some like, you know, that's, that's the fun thing about Pokemonic too is like, you didn't have to be such a... You didn't have to know music theory or do something really complicated and make something sound interesting or fun or... And, um... Yeah, definitely, like, it's, that song's, like, ten years old now, but... I still go back and listen to it, and that was, like... That was the deathcore band I was trying to make, you know? And eventually that became, um, First Assault. Most of the time I spent just countless attempts like making songs just using fret zero and one. Just stuck on the reds all the time. I was like if it didn't have red it it sucked in my mind. Like it needed to be heavy. But uh, you know, a lot of other people like um like Palm.net members like like Spectre and uh, Nocturne and all of them just kinda opened up my creativity to kind of want to use more of the all that you know Pokemon 2 had available so I kind of expanded out a bit but not too much <laughs> to be honest but so I kind of I kind of left like this like it had to be a certain way it kind of sound to it kind of it could sound a little bit more expanded but that expanded sound ended up being another kind of genre I was really into at the time was like what what they call like a beat down kind of like that tough guy hardcore sound it really depends on what band you're listening to to kind of get that right sound, but I wanted to mix a bit of a deathcore kind of sound with a hardcore sound. That's kind of what I was growing up with at that time. And, uh, you know, opening up more of the notes that were available in uh, Palm 2 kind of gave me, got me a little bit closer than just like focusing on the red, you know. Um. So that's where that's where kind of first assault came from. Um, I just wanted uh, actually at first they were, I called them first blood, but then I, I soon realized that there was actually a band already named first blood. So I kind of ex just kind of thought about a different name and like I guess you could say that the name has like a military kind of sound to it. Or uh, it's funny when you look at first assault, you look like, like a criminal charge. <laughs> I'm like maybe maybe that's accurate about the band. I'm not sure, but um, I just kind of wanted something that would actually like show up first on a list, like, instead of alphabetical, like, he already had, like, the number show up first. It's kind of like, egotistical, but, like, but the other part was just, I wanted something, like, I don't know, I just wanted something kind of, like, that stand out as a name, um, and that's just what, it, that's what, what it was, it was just, uh, first assault, and, like, the first to do something, first something, like, first to get in a fight, first to, uh, cause trouble, like, first to cause an assault, <laughs> I don't know, but that's what the band ended up, like, just to go along with that oh, tough guy kind of vibe I was going for with, with this fictional band. The biggest thing, though, even though I'm talking about having this band, First Assault, and we did a bunch of promotional material, and it was so expansive, the history and story about them, but... In the end, I never really released much at all, honestly, and there's just a few songs, and 
And it's mostly because I was just never really satisfied. I can never really complete a song. I never felt like none of those songs were really finished. And I never really want to release something um, kind of okay. And I really wanted to feel like a full, from beginning to end, complete, finished, well-made song. And I just I can never get to that point. And um, the album I always wanted to finish was uh, When You City Take Over. I grew up in Chicago. I, I still live in Chicago, and um, actually, the, the title of the album comes off a song from a band called Demolisher. They have a song called "When You Say Take Over." You should check it out if you want to. Um, but that's kind of like the sound I was going for, and to have a song named after this, and I I actually have the album art finished for it, everything, but I just never was satisfied. Um, and I, I feel bad because I, I released some of the songs, but I didn't really do a proper video for them either. They just, I kind of cheaped out on it, you know, cheap sushi, right? Um, and that's another thing. It's just, uh, I, th I think um, the biggest thing for me, the biggest uh, setback, the biggest thing that kind of weighed me down always was, uh, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people have dealt with this, especially in the community. And I mean, everyone has these kind of things, but I've always had de lifelong depression and um it always kind of took my energy away and i could always get started on something and get close to it but it just never it was just really impossible to finish something and so i just have songs a bunch of songs i half finished pieces here and there and maybe you know it's 10 years later or so but maybe i'll release that eventually too but um the the thought was always there i just never got to it and but yeah, that goes, uh, I wanted to make a deathcore beatdown kind of band and called First Assault. The album was When You Say Takeover and it just never released. And um, that's another thing I'm kind of sorry for because I'm sure there were a lot of people who were curious about it, you know, for a while. And um, there were a lot of prolific uh, Pokematic members that always released really, really like well done, great songs. And I just can never really keep up with that. And, uh, it wasn't for a lack of effort or like I wasn't interested. It just uh, it was always very very hard for me to like sit down and really complete something. Um, but I hope what I whatever I did release, I, I hope like it, <laughs> I hope it was good, worth listening to. <laughs> so instead of um, finishing the album, um, you know when I didn't have energy for that, I I ended up having. Uh, I ended up putting that kind of energy into something else, and that's when uh, I started getting more into the other content creation. So, I mean, Punkomatic Records, uh, Cookies and Biscuit Records were the first, I believe they were the first um, Palm Record a label, and uh, I thought that's such a, such a you know, goofy, fun idea. Like, it's a flash game, and here we are having labels. Where, like, it was, it's so amazing that uh, Evil Dog like let. Um, create a tool set to you know even export your songs have mp3s of them you know like as it you know like stuff like that just gave the game such longevity and uh it made so many things more more possible and, and you know we ended up a lot of people and me and, uh, and other people like just started releasing things and you know just kind of taking that story like f that this flash game going a little bit further and um doing Almar and um and I kind of had an idea of like how I wanted a record label to look and again I was I was in school for it a bit of at that time so I wanted to kind of like test myself more and there were so many iterations of Pokematic records and the corner and um, I mean I, I have some I mean one thing I, I was I would make sure to do it it hasn't been cheap like um, it's cost me money every year but I've I've kept up the Weebly accounts. I paid for them. Um, even 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 the Evil Dog website, which I'm uh, sadly has hasn't been updated by me or you know I feel like I feel a bit responsible for that. But I I've paid for these sites f to keep going because I want people to look back on it. You know, have something up. You know, it's like you know, it's sad, but and I to I understand. But you know, Punkamag.net website's down. But you know, I I'm glad that the Palm Records and The Corner and some other things are still up and Cookies and Biscuits is still up and 
so people even years later can come come back and kind of feel that nostalgia that you know I can see like people put really big effort into it. I always have this tagline of fictional fictional bands real music and that's what it was it's people put their like heart into this stuff and especially when you're a kid and um, this is like I said your outlet like it just uh, it just seems something really fun and like great about it and like great energy and you know and even the community I remember on the forum nobody was really rude to each other or anything like that like we, we had troll stuff sometimes but you know it was like just a generally good vibe and like I spent I spent so many hours learning how to code like I learned how to like make websites from MySpace era that's how that's how far back this goes when you could like custom make your MySpace like that's when Deathcore was big too like it's <laughs> so, so goofy so I spent hours like on Weebly because you could you could edit the HTML and you didn't really need to like you can make a decent looking website without it but I always wanted it to be a certain way look a certain way and um it's just I have so many assets like still like folders and folders of stuff that like I mean people will never really see or like I don't even care but I mean there's some stuff I'm showing right now but yeah just there just took so much effort and a really cool thing is that uh, I think the last album released on Palm Records was 2013 and Faceless Culture which is this one of the bands that was on Palm Records just recently released something now in 2021 and that's just so cool I like the thought like that somebody like years later like still thinks about punk matic and like puts out something and it's just like you know I, I, I'm glad that it still exists like um, just again just like stuff like this I think like it's just good for everybody like if if you can go back and remember things that you did like it kind of gives you a good reference point in your life um, I mean oftentimes you can especially when you're in a very like bad and negative mood like that how I, how I often get like if you don't have anything to look back on, it's hard to tell yourself, like, look how far I've come, look what I've done before. And, um, so I'm, I'm glad these web the website's still around. You know, like I said, it's, it hasn't been cheap, but, you know, but I'm glad that this stuff is still around. And, like, I, I really encourage people to just check it out again, if not, and, like, and see, like, how much effort this stuff took and um, download an album or something. <laughs> like, go listen to a few people's music uh, albums that they put out. But, yeah, I hope everybody really enjoyed this stuff, especially back then. And um, another thing I remember, um, it's not up anymore, but it was Carnage TV. Um, you know, I grew up watching music, te like music videos. And late at night, there used to be a music video channel here. Um, I think there was two of them actually. One played metal, and one played like hardcore emo, kind of like punk stuff. Um, I don't know if it was just a Chicago thing or not. It wasn't MTV. It was some. It was other thing, uh, like two other um, networks. So I kind of wanted to make something similar like that, so I like, I had this fake like, broadcast Carnage TV, and later it became more official. It became Palm TV when I got um, more connected, became an admin on uh, Palm.net, and that went on for a while. And actually, I still I still try to save. I still once in a while look at the music videos on um, on uh, YouTube to see if there's anybody releasing the music videos, and try to add them to like this global playlist. Um, just because I think, like, again, like, I love archiving this kind of stuff so people can look back on it. Um, so here's some assets from it, you know. I'm, I'm sure nobody remembers this site at all. Like, it's, it, I, I don't think it was around for that long. And I kind of, I forgot what happened to it exactly, but um, I took it down. But music videos, like, that was my, like, my m biggest thing. And um, I did make some a few music videos in real life. Um, nothing punk matic related. Um this other stuff but so that was like my main passion is so we have like this like fake broadcasting i i tried to go really into it. like there's like a a fake tv like uh set with like video playing inside of it all this stuff like i hope people enjoyed like that somebody <laughs> would go this far with something um i mean there's so many things i wa i could talk about like back then but it's it's just kind of hard because it's it's so many years have passed i've kind of forgotten details but I I still remember like what was the hardest music video to make and um I mean there's just there's so many little things about when I was more involved in all this that I could talk about but um I guess my final point I know this like video is pretty long and you know and uh my, my microphone my voice probably sounds like ass total like it sounds like shit on on this microphone 
I apologize for that. But I just wanted to release something and put something out there. But again, this was, this is like the biggest thing that, um, like I wanted to say thank you to the Punkomatic community and Evil Dog Games for having this available and you know having like such being such a great community. And I, I'm you know I'm still amazed when I get comments now years later, here and there. And but um, one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, you know because of the work I put into Punkomatic. And the community, I ended up getting hired at Evil Dog Games for a while, and um, I just wanted to apologize a bit because I feel like uh, a big part of like not, I don't know I want to say big part, but I feel like I contributed to uh, I didn't I didn't contribute enough to be honest, and uh, that, again that kind of goes back to like my mental health and depression and things going on at that time and. Um, you know, actually, like everything that happened for a long time, like that's kind of what led me to the to the to the career path I'm in now. I'm, now I'm in the medical field. I didn't think, I didn't go into music or video production or anything like that. I went to I got into the medical field, and you know, like right after, you know, I, I was in the I was in the thick of it during this whole COVID thing, and that's why I'm kind of making this video because I you know I saw a lot, experienced a lot, and it kind of made me think back on my life and some things that. I wish I would have done differently, and um, I did help Evil Dog um, make the website and uh, do promotions for some games and uh, do some social media work and um, create. I did create some videos and stuff like that, and uh, I'm very thankful for that. But I feel like I, if I would have did more, if I would have been like the best version of myself at that time, maybe I maybe I would have contributed to make helping make uh, Punkomatic Pro. A real thing you know like um, I know a lot of people were looking forward to that and so was I because you know I, I'm, I'm I'll always be a big fan of uh, of Evil Dog Games and what what uh, what Marco has done um, you know I, I remember this I remember Lord of the Dead and everything for a long time and Punkomatic and you know all the other, other goofy games and things that he's done even, <laughs> even his music you know I'm sure a lot of people in the community remember that but I feel like I didn't really do my best, and um, there's a lot of other things too, of course. You know, I, I don't want to put everything. It's not all me and stuff like this, but I, I know I could have did a bit better and maybe contributed, and well, maybe we'd have a different discussion right now. But you know, like I said, you know, after um, after especially last year and this year, like everything I've gone through now with my medical career and. Um, family and uh, friends and you know I just kind of realized like how important it is to be to have a community to be involved with people and have certain good people around you for support and um, I'm thankful for like that time when I was a younger that, that had, I had that support from the community um, and, and I'm, I'm a, I hope other people who were also part of the Pokemon community felt like it was a place you know to go to and you didn't really have anybody else or you wanted to have a creative outlet or new friends or somebody to understand you or maybe listen to music that other people weren't listening to and um, even the, the the ability to be part of like all these projects I hope they kind of like help people in a certain way because that's kind of the direction I've gone with my life is to try to help people in, in ways that I can um, so again, I'm gonna apologize for a long video. I kind of, I know I'm kind of rambling, but you know, again, thank you, thank you, uh, Punkomatic community. Thank you, Evil Dog Games. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, uh, Trace of uh, Hatred, uh, Chris. Um, thank you to the people who comment and um, again, I, 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 I'm, I'm really grateful that this was a thing that this existed, a flash game, and. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for, I wish I could have did more to contribute, um, but other than that, like, um, take care everybody, you know, really, really take care, um, I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad there's still, there's still something like this existing around, and new you know, there's that big scare, uh, that Flash was gonna go away, and um, I'm glad that Newgrounds kind of really stepped in, and, and, and we can still play Funkomatic, and still make songs, and, still release things in 2021 now and yeah i really um really appreciate that time and that this is still going on all right take care everybody bye